This is Brady and Carrie Timms with their newborn son, Jameson. Two years ago, the Georgia state government stole Jameson from Brady and Carrie because he has a medical condition and the government doesn't want to admit it. Their family has been fractured ever since and Brady and Carrie still face the possibility of criminal charges, despite the fact that they still haven't been indicted in two years. If you're like me, you're probably wondering how this is even possible. Well, Jameson first started having health issues at six weeks old. Brady and Carrie would rush him to his pediatrician for answers every time anything happened. The first time these loving parents sought treatment for their sick son, they went to Erlinger Baroness Hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Blood work was completed there, and the Tims were told that everything was normal. They later discovered that doctors at Erlinger Baroness had lied to them, but more on that in a bit. Jameson's pediatrician recommended that they take him to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, or CHOA, it was there that Jameson was found to have three fractured ribs in various stages of healing. Choa's child abuse physician, Dr. Verena Brown, ruled that Jameson was being abused and then she sought a second opinion. Her opinion was reviewed by another child abuse physician, Dr. Stephen Messner, who agreed that this was a case of abuse. And without any due diligence or investigation, Georgia's Department of Family and Children's Services, DFACS, seized Jameson. Brady and Carey were charged with multiple child abuse felonies based on the opinion of doctors Brown and Messner. The police made little effort to investigate themselves, they just went with what the doctors said. Now for those who follow me, this all probably sounds a lot like what the Hernandez family has been put through. And there may be a good reason for it. Dr. Messner is the same physician who ruled that Emma Hernandez was a victim of abuse leading to her innocent family's continued suffering at the hand of prosecutors and defects. Now, Brady and Carrie knew that Jameson hadn't been abused, and they suspected that he had an underlying health condition, so they began researching. They found a group online called Parents Behind the Pinwheels, and it was there that they discovered that many other parents were going through the same thing. Their children had a medical condition, child abuse physicians called it abuse, and the state would seize their kids and prosecute them, even though they hadn't abused the children. Based on Jameson's symptoms and information that they got from other parents in the group, Brady and Carey had enough to demand Jameson's medical records from authorities. Once they finally got those records, the Tims discovered that that hospital in Chattanooga had lied to them. Jameson's results were abnormal, and of course, Choa had never shown them the x-rays of Jameson. Brady and Carey begged the juvenile court judge to let them take Jameson to a specialist at Boston Children's, one of the best hospitals in the country. Once they finally got approval and took Jameson to Boston Children's with DFAC's officials present, they discovered that not only did Jameson have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but so did Carey, which medically and lawfully explains the conditions for which Jameson has presented since six weeks old, as well as the complications that Carey had experienced during pregnancy. Let me repeat this part. A medical specialist told Brady and Carey and DFAC's officials that Jameson had a medical condition which caused rib fractures. The very people who were in charge of deciding if Jameson had been abused had just heard from an expert that he hadn't. So of course, like any reasonable person, Brady and Carey were certain that their criminal charges would be dropped and Jameson would be returned. They were wrong. DFAX has refused to acknowledge Jameson's diagnosis that their employees had literally just heard firsthand. Brady and Carey are still awaiting an indictment for the alleged abuse that they were arrested for two years ago. And if all that isn't bad enough, the courts have also ignored another report from a geneticist who concluded that Dr. Brown, the first child abuse physician, had missed multiple indications in her own reports that Jameson had a bone condition, which would explain the fractures. These findings, which remove all doubt that Brady and Carrie are innocent, were not even allowed to be heard in their case in juvenile court to get Jameson back. And to make all of this even worse, as a condition of their bond, Brady and Carrie are not allowed to be around any children. Brady has a son from a previous relationship and cannot see him without being supervised. Jameson and his brother haven't lived together in two years. Two years of this nightmare and Brady and Carrie haven't even been indicted. And it's pretty obvious why. Every bit of actual evidence points to the fact that not only was Jameson not abused, 
but authorities knew he wasn't being abused and they chose to seize him anyway. This family has suffered more than any innocent family should, and we're going to get them reunited. Here's how you can help. First, go to youarethepower.net slash TIMS. That's youarethepower.net slash T-I-M-M-S. On that page, you'll find a list of authorities to contact and a template of wording that you can use to email them. Right now, we're focusing on Earl Newton, who's the acting district attorney in this case, and Tony Pyle, the chief of the Calhoun Police Department. And listen, before you contact them, I know you're probably as angry as I am about this, but you also know how government officials are. They'd love to play the victim here. They'd love to claim that they've received all these angry emails and they're just doing their jobs and why is everyone being so mean to them? They'd love nothing more than to make this about them. But it's not about them and it's not about what we think about them. It's about Brady, Carey, and Jameson Timms. It's about reuniting them, getting these ridiculous charges dropped, and ending this nightmare for them for good. So please, be respectful when you contact these officials. Stick to the facts. We've got all of them written out on that page. Ask them to do the right thing. Government officials care about what's politically expedient. So let's make it politically expedient for them to drop these charges and let Jameson come home. Again, that page is youarethepower.net slash T-I-M-M-S. And once you've done that, be sure to share this right now, far and wide, everywhere you can, and tag your friends and loved ones in the comments. Tag your favorite influencers, tag everyone. We want as many people as possible to help us reunite this family. With your help, we will help this family like we've helped so many others. Now let's do it.